The seats have been rumbling for quite some time. Fists clenched, disconcerted eyes roll around the aisles of run out mid sized aircraft. The stronger and thicker the angst, the rumble gets, the thicker the angst in the air becomes. Panic hasn't reached everyone here yet, but every count of breathing feels different as it goes on. Time freezes and hearts drop when gravity lets go of bodies of these mortal souls. Words cannot express the direness of vulnerable life's premonition. The sound of rattling windows numb out every feeling or every chances of feeling safe. No one can help not to feel the questionable inkling of what's to come. In a second of instant plunge, we land on a space of infinite fall. Closing a set of eyes to seek for a moment of peace, darkness embraces and hides the chaos back into its place. Hands together upon tight knees with a frightened heart will my pray for this moment to pass. It's only the feeling of existence that's left on the seat in this experience of the unknown and indescribable force. Trembling yet so consciously standing still, shall we dwell upon the ever morphing sense of presence.
This is a recording I made, I accidentally made, on July 28th, 2011, when I was recording my own voice and realized there's this heavy white noise in the background. I wasn't aware of the weather at the time, but turns out it was the heaviest rainstorm of the year, and which flooded my studio. And I couldn't help to pay attention to what's going outside and just point the microphone towards the outdoors, to the weather, and what is happening around me. It was also the first time ever I started making field recordings, and ever since, I've been continuously, every now and then, record the sound of the rain and of our surroundings. And whenever I listen to the weather, the storm, or perhaps the turbulence, it ingrains a certain type of memory, a certain type of situatedness that you are in. And when you go back to it, you access that memory and you access that feeling very multisensorially. I would like to share a short section from this book by David Toop called Haunted Weather, Music, Silence, and Memory. Um, specifically a section where he interviews, um, it's the wrong page that I saved. <laughs> Oops. It's the section alarm prayer collapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. He interviews Lee Ronaldo, a gu guitarist from Sonic, Sonic Youth. He lives in New York and he witnessed the incident of 9 11 in a very close proximity of distance. And this was his day. I went into the shower to get ready to take my son to his school day, uh, his second day of school. If the first plane did not register as something completely out of the ordinary, the second certainly did. Even from inside the shower, the sound of the sky ripping wide open followed by explosive impact was without a doubt not the normal sound of Manhattan morning. In spite of being so close, because our windows don't face the towers, we watched the entire thing on the television. At one point after both planes hit, I left my family, I, I hit, I left my family and the apartment and took the elevator up to the, our rooftop, eight stories up. I came out on the rooftop and rounded the shadow of a nearby building and there in my sight were the two towers, gapping holes and black smoke looming immediately over my head, a staggering sight. Within seconds of my sighting them, and this is my most vivid sonic memory of the day, there was a sound in the air like nothing I've heard before a giant roaring noise that I could not place or identify. My first thought was that more planes were attacking, coming in, but it was a sound different from that. I'm still trying to put my finger on how to verbally explain the latent sonic image of that sound in my mind's eye or ear. In any case, concerned for my family, I rushed back inside and down to our apartment arriving in time to witness the South Tower crumbling on the TV screen. And moments later, the black cloud of debris from it darkening our windows. It was the sound of the building about to fall that I'd heard. Just the sound. For a while, in my view, it was not in the process of crumbling just yet. It still chills me to recall those moments up on the rooftop. 
all, I, all told, I may have seen the towers live that morning for a total of something under a minute. But the sight of it, and especially that roaring sound just prior to the collapse of the first tower is imprinted on my memory. Yeah, so I can do this for all day, I want, and which is what my practice is all about. Turbulence, so finally we land on the subject. And how does this relate to uh, the work that I'm doing and also um, yeah, some of the key points that I would like to, I have addressed beforehand about the weather, and about this ominous roaring sound that's ingrained in our memory um, and also uh, the experience of being in a flight that was very turbulent. Um, apparently turbulence in the airplane is not a dangerous sign. It just makes you feel very uncomfortable. Actually, more. Uh, this is from a, a friend of mine who is a pilot. Um, more dangerous or like more alarming um, s situation or phenomenon is actually the weather. Harsh weather, rain, snow, storms, and such, such things are more dangerous to a flight. You're looking at its earliest, uh, one of the most earliest uh, description of turbulence that Leonardo da Vinci once wanted to um, record and draw uh, from his uh, art and science note that was published recent, uh, in 2019, I believe. Um, this is a water cascade turbulence and we find the patterns of turbulence not both just artistically but scientifically is also a very interesting point to look at because no scientist can ever predict what turbulence is going to be. It's just infinitely spinning numbers of Reynolds number. And although it is predictable um, because of the time, pressure, and temperature conditions, it's neither chaotic nor predictable. And within our weather system, turbulence is, turbulence resides within the airflows that we observe and receive as the learning of the conditions. Weather system by its definition is the movement of warm and cold air across the globe. These movements are known as low pressure systems and high pressure systems and com high pressure systems and low pressure s systems combining together, reacting together, creating the weather phenomenon that we know. And in the audiovisual practice of turbulent studies is about following this narrative of turbulence, the phenomenon of turbulence, and trying to depict this in a site-specific manner to aware, become aware of the situatedness uh, of our surroundings and also our sensories. 
It consists of three different elements of sound, light, and pneumatics. And I always describe it as a building of an instrument. And this particular instrument works with fluid dynamics of the high compressed air, vapor, and to visualize them, I used light and sound. Here you see the compressed uh, uh, pneumatic apparatus that I use to release or to design the compressed air, the high pressure air system. These solenoids valves they are connected to a compressor as well as a contact mic system to pick up the sound and to sonify them as a textural composition. And in the most recent uh, presentation of turbulent studies, which is Latent Amongst the Air, which is now installed in Maka of Amsterdam. I have collaborated with Jesus Iglesias and Zoys Lumakis to come up with these rigging system where I can place 12 different valves into the ceiling and by the vapor to create cloud-like air sculptures and patterns. The composition is really to design to explore the latent patterns of the air that's in the room. Because without these devices, turbulence already exists amongst us. The air flows of our bodies, of any movements of non-humans as well um, can inflict these patterns and textures that we see. It, they just don't get visualized. And with this apparatus comes with the custom-made software, of course. Um, it involves a lot of technology and I'm using the technology um, not in a way it's meant to be or really pushing its edge um, to its limit. These moving heads or lights, um, they're meant to be very showcase spectacular or spectacles but it is a challenge within the project and also the performance itself to really enunciate the details and small little particles. The project took place uh, before Leighton late Amongst the Air in uh, numerous different iterations, uh, one, of which, one of which was morphology of the aerial. And this particular iteration, I focused on a spatial sound composition with a channel setup. And this was also commissioned by Sonic X, which we will hopefully be able to hear uh, during the festival. Every iteration of the performance comes out differently and this is the very interesting and the point of me continuously exploring the space, different spaces and patterns of these turbulent particles. Seems like something happened. Um,
And not only we can explore the turbulent behaviors of the air with the physical force of the turning fans, high compressed air, and thermodynamic temperatures, but also turbulence is something of a state of Is it okay? Um, the next section of the video. It's it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, turbulence evokes an interesting tinge on the emotional side uh, of our feelings and perceiving of our surroundings, of the ominous, dark and uncomfortable, yet just right. <laughs> Coming to an end of this uh, presentation, um, I would like to address or um, yeah, read another writing, a short quote. Um, ah, great. Yeah, it's, it was this slide, but uh, we need to get to the ending of the video, so it's okay. Um, the whole point uh, for me of designing this apparatus and working with this apparatus is actually not to continuously just look for a turbulent patterns, but also um, it is to find out a different perspective, different ideas, and uh, try to understand the diversity within working with machines and in weave in uh, the ethics of our ecosystem and ecology, in a sense. Um, and I would like to read this uh, quote out um, as an ending note. This is from Machine and Ecology, uh, which Hui wrote um, in 2020. The inquiry into relation between machine and ecology is less about how to design more intellectual in intelligent machines, but rather requires, first of all, a discovery of uh, cosmotechnical diversity, which such diversity has to be thought through by going back to the question of locality, therefore re-articulating the concept of techniques by resulting, resulting it with the geopolitical milieu, culture, and thinking. And for the ongoing process of this research, I would like to discover the connection, not only from the very local problem of me being fascinated by the, this very phenomenon, or being able to listen or pay attention and question about, okay, what is this sound coming from? Where, what is the weather trying to tell me? But also at the same time, uh, weaving this uh, narrative into the technology that we use and also a sense of urgency that we feel about our, our, our weather system or the climate. Um, there sh we understand and um, the connection. I hope we understand the connection between the narrative of the turbulence as well as um, the sense of urgency that we uh, feel from this very phenomenon. Thank you.